As the virtual queues have still not opened up for Tiana's Bayou Adventure over at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom Park, we're now hearing that work is almost completed on the Disneyland version of the ride. And while there was lots of footage from the Imagineering previews, we're now hearing that pass holder previews might be starting soon on the Disneyland version of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Let's talk about that on That Park Place. We've got a clip I want to play really quick to uh, to announce uh, something that I was not expecting to talk about this week during a hurricane. We're thinking of rushing it so that we can get it out in time for Juneteenth. Yeah. Juneteenth. We're thinking of making a big holiday push. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Well, uh, Disney, by the way, and for those of you who have not followed this situation, Disney is the one that made this political. Disney is the one that introduced the idea that this is a problematic ride that needs to be replaced. So we didn't make it political. Disney made it political. And what political action are they taking today? Well, it looks like Disneyland is announcing uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure is getting Magic Key previews. Magic Key is the annual pass holder program out there at Disneyland. Uh, it's it's not like the uh, the passes that they just have out there in Orlando. Disneyland Resort will hold Magic Key previews for Tiana's Bayou Adventure before its grand opening on November 15th. Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Look at it right there. It it, it looks a little bit better than the... Uh, Orlando side of things. I, I do have to say it does look better. Bash, just just am, am I wrong here? It's there's a little less broccoli on it, a little bit more stonework. I feel like it looks better, not better than Splash Mountain. Straight on, it looks OK. Now, when you're actually seeing this from, uh, you know, from down below right there along that pathway that runs along the side of it, it actually looks very lopsided for some reason. Not sure why that actually happened. I, I believe um, even some people who have been uh, big fans of Gianna's Body Adventure have said as much as well. It's just something when you get rid of that chicken hill, mm, some uh, a little bit of magic is stripped away. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it looks like Disneyland, you know, might benefit from a couple of things. Still, it's on a spy adventure. Uh, yes, it is. And and I'll, I'll also point out that there have been people who were um, some would describe as emotional, self-describe as emotional. Actually, uh, there's uh, one fellow in particular that I'm going to remain. I'm going to keep his name out of it. That talked about the the emotional experience of riding Tiana's Bayou Adventure at Walt Disney World for the first time. Even he has pointed out some issues that this ride has had as it has continued to degrade over the last 40 years. Oh, wait, several months. Or is it just weeks now? Sometimes it it feels like this this job is dog years at times. <laughs> uh, this is a ride that is brand new out at Walt Disney World, and uh, we still don't expect this thing to work. I, 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 I'm ready to put it in the same category as Star Wars Rise of Resistance, where there are just mass periods of time when it's just shut down for no reason in particular. Well, that's why they have the virtual queues still there and why they are giving uh, so few virtual queues in terms of um, the overall capacity for this attraction because of how much this thing goes down. I mean, it's just it, they just cannot keep this up for any period of time. And so they had to pad out um, how much um, the, the, the capacity and how many how many people will actually go on this, given the demand for this attraction. I mean, this is the saddest thing, Jonas. This is going to be the only attraction that is added to the parks for at least anywhere between three to five years, especially if you're looking at Disneyland Resort, which, uh, you know, there is more information on, on what might be coming. But when you look at this attraction right here, this is it. This is all we're getting for five years. And so, uh, sure, demand might be elevated uh, because of that. Uh, but but even Disney can't necessarily fill that demand just because of of how much they've uh, bungled this entire thing. Now, we're hoping for better results for Disneyland. Uh, they, they have been doing a lot of electrical work and and hopefully uh, getting it up to a, a code that is maybe superior to what we might find at Walt Disney World. I know it was lacking a little bit at Disneyland, so maybe they have those things, um, you know, uh, dialed in. But I, I'm, I'm not thinking so. I will say Magic Key uh, previews are very encouraging because usually you can dial in some of those things before going live with this attraction upon its official opening. Do you think they're going to do a POV for this one? <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't I don't think that's going to happen, Jonas. I what? think they're they're going to, you know, we have a POV. It's of the Walt Disney World version. Uh, I think they're just going to settle 
on that. I'm sure we'll get many POVs when this thing opens, but none from Disney. That's that's for sure. Do you want to explain that for anybody who doesn't who who has forgotten already just how much uh, uh, Disney bungled the Walt Disney World Resort version of this ride? Absolutely. Well, shortly before the official opening of the Walt Disney World version, and that being in June next to uh, as close as they could possibly to Juneteenth. Anyway, they didn't quite make the date right there. Well, they decided to uh, post or at least uh, we were thinking that it was uh, Walt Disney World or Disney Parks official social media team. Apparently, that's not been the case. But uh, anyway, an account holder of the official Disney Parks blog YouTube channel actually posted a full POV of the attraction. Uh, um, And if anybody recalls, this was something that we had been wanting for a while because we had been getting uh, very little in terms of uh, marketing featuring the inside of this attraction. We had been getting very little in terms of what this might actually look like on the inside and what happened to those amazing Splash Mountain sets. Well, we all had those answers Uh, provided to us via that first POV video that was posted. And uh, if you look on the official statistics for that video, not 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 so good. The like dislike ratio, not quite where Disney would want that. And a lot of people have criticized that video and saying that it's not a amazing showcase for that attraction. And I will agree that it it maybe doesn't put its best foot forward, but it, it is still representative of the experience that anybody might actually um encounter uh now again you might be able to turn your head and you might be able to see show lighting in the way it was intended to be presented but still the blank spaces that are there a lot of the dialogue choices that they've made the audiomatronics either working not working all those things are are you know baked into the cake so to speak and you're not really going to get around those things uh, whether it's a, 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 an amazing POV or otherwise. And so we've seen subsequent videos from the inside of that attraction, and it doesn't get much better. I will say it does get better, but not much. The the inherent problems uh, still exist with that attraction. I, I totally agree. And and I, 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 I've also heard uh, this is rumor and speculation, but we have from a, a pretty good source that the, the social media team out there at Walt Disney World Resort were not in charge of that POV. Someone else released that POV, making the social media team out at Disney World very upset uh, because they know how to do it. Also, the POVs from influencers were definitely better and were more representative of what people are used to on that ride. So I I don't know. I, I really don't understand why they did what they did. Hopefully they learned their lesson. I don't think they'll do one for this one. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what the differences are between this one and also the uh, Walt Disney World one. But uh, you, you know something else that I'm always uh, excited to see the differences on. Uh, our good friend Culture Casino has appeared. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, you were talking about what used to be everybody's favorite park ride. And, uh, you know, I couldn't miss the opportunity to say, wow, how the mighty have fallen. Yeah, Splash Mountain was wonderful, and, uh, and I, I hate to say it, it goes up in my estimation every single year. It was always the one that I put at the end of my Disney trip because, as a native Floridian, you always know if you're gonna get if you if you if you're gonna have people splashing water all over you, you probably don't want to be walking around in the middle of the day. And I know there are some people that like to be refreshed in the middle of the day, uh, and uh, I say you are insane. And uh, I, and I say there's a lovely uh, pool at your hotel. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, man, and, and if you're gonna try to get refreshed in the middle of the day, get an it's a Caduzzi. Those things were uh, fantastic. I don't think they sell those anymore. Well, they they have these lovely like you know drinks that you can get at a place that are you know inspire an orange bird or were inspired by an orange bird. Ah, yes. Mm. And are you talking about the Dole Whip and yes. the? Uh, oh man. Love those. Yeah. And yeah. and now they're basically, oh, what about the strawberry Dole Whip? What about the pineapple? Well, it's already pineapple, but yeah. uh, the about, vanilla Dole Whip. The, and the orange, you know. Exactly. Mm. This oh. is just perfect for this clip in, in particular. Why, you can't open a splash mound when that mound ain't got no water. No water. No water. No water. I love it. I love it. No water. <laughs> Of water. I also love the cheesiness of classic Disney. There were fireworks for that opening as opposed to, okay, we're going to get the ladder out and everybody that was involved stand over there and we're going to take a picture of it. 
Let's see if I can get a before and after on that. The opening festivities of Splash Mountain and back in 1989, yeah. July 17th, that is, and uh, Tiana's by Adventure. The, the stark contrast, indeed. By the way, I told everybody that I would be looking this up and I'm going to go ahead and bring it out here. This is what Disney used to do back in the day when it, uh, when they when it came cares. to celebrating opening attractions. Look at all of that wonderment, that uh, that um, just amazing festivities associated with the grand opening of um, Splash Mountain back at Magic Kingdom. So cool. And now, well, this is the opening ceremony for Gianna's by Adventure. Um, there you go. That's the that's the contrast there. Hey, you know what? It, it, they they had they must add like place markers for everybody so they could you know get the representation out there really well. Um, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, uh, let's go ahead and uh, yeah, look at that in here. Yeah, look, yeah. we got it. Wait, put the wheelchair person here and make sure we block them as much as we can. Oh, uh, with the lady in green. But but look, they are looking up at least at uh, somebody on a step stool. Thanks for watching that park plays news. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.